we are going to make a five-sided gallery, so a pentagonal shaped room with pictures on each of the walls or with one picture on each of those walls. You can see here that I've selected a set of images and I have numbered and named them, giving them short, simple names and putting a number at the beginning of each name. It's also important to note that all my images are in the vertical or portrait orientation and they're also all in the same aspect ratio being four to three. Other common aspect ratios are two to three or 16 nine, whether it's from a DSLR image or whether it's a video frame. It's not important which aspect ratio you use. You can use two, three horizontal, four, three vertical, whatever, but for your first um, attempt to make a gallery, it's much simpler to have all your images be consistent. So that's how we're doing it here. Um, I've also set the color space on all these images to sRGB, which has a relatively low color gamut compared to, for example, Profoto or Adobe RGB, but it allows for greater compatibility. If you're not sure how to set the color space on your image, um, you can just skip that step. Here we have our default new document in Blender. I'm going to go ahead and select the camera, press X and delete. I'm going to select the cube, select the cube, press X and delete. So now I just have an open space. I'm going to leave the light. Now I'm going to set the view to just looking at the X or Y axis. It's not important which. I'm going to bring my folder up and I'm just going to proceed to drag my pictures into the scene. The reason I'm bringing my images into the scene this way is I want to quickly see how the colors are showing up in Blender. Um, and to my eye, they look fine for what we're doing here. Now you can see in the layer section, these images have been named empty, empty001, etc. To keep things moving quickly or to keep things simple, I'm going to rename these images with a simple number. If you would rather have simple one word names for your images, that is fine. Because I see that my images are in the order I want already, um, I'm just going to put numbers on them. I'm then going to right click in the layer section and make a new collection. I'm going to call that collection pictures. I'm going to select my five images and drag them in there. So now they're in their own. Um, collection or group. Now this little icon here that looks like a funnel gives me some different settings for the layers menu um, or the layers palette. I'm going to choose this one that looks like a camera and now I can see whether objects are visible and if they're going to be rendered. Um, in my opinion this should really be on default. So for this whole tab I'm going to turn off the eye so I don't see these images and I'm also going to turn off the camera to make sure they don't show up in my final rendering and then I'm going to collapse the tab. So now I've seen that the images look okay and I have the images in the file already. Rotating my view around and I'm working on a Mac so I'm just doing that by dragging around with two fingers. I can zoom in by just pinching in and out with my fingers and if I hold down shift and drag I can just drag the whole scene around. Now the first thing I want to do is add an object and I want to create a pentagon. And I'm going to do this in a way that may seem slightly um, counterintuitive. So I'm going to um, counterintuitive at first, I should say. So pressing Shift A will um, bring up my Add menu. And I want to add, we have all these different options here, a mesh. And the mesh I'm going to add is a cylinder. But after I click on cylinder, I'm not going to touch anything. So now we see our cylinder. And we can see that it has sides on it because a mesh is a polygon based graphic. There's no true curves in a mesh. Now down here where it says add cylinder, I'm going to click on that little triangle and a menu is going to open. Something to keep in mind with Blender, with many functions and objects, the moment you add them, this little menu shows up. And if you don't use it then, you don't always have an option to go back to those settings. So if you've already clicked somewhere else and lost this menu, just delete the shape you've made, create a new one, and go from here. Now I'm going to set the vertices on this quote cylinder to 5. And now you can see it looks a lot more like a pentagon because it is a, it's a pentagonal based prism. Now for the radius, um, that determines as if it was a sphere, so you can imagine a virtual circle going around this pentagon, that's the size of the radius. And then the depth is how tall or short the object is. 
um, I'm going to keep the depth at the default 2, and I am going to set the radius, and you should follow this number exactly, to 1.7. And now that my settings are in, I can click outside. Now, the reason I've set this to seven, I'm gonna to switch to side view, is because I've determined that that gives us a square shaped face. Um, as you'll see, as we adjust um, the inset face for our images, starting with a square is very helpful. If we want to change the proportions of our room, we can do that. For the sake of keeping things simple, we really wanna start with square faces. So staying in the Layout tab, we're not going to use anything else here for a little while, you'll notice here it says Object Mode. And if I click on this, there's all these other options. Um, I'm going to just click out of there for a second because a very important key command in Blender is Tab, which brings us into Edit Mode. Um, you can tell you're there because it says Edit Mode and also because we have many more tools. Now you'll notice that my... Um, Pentagon Prism now has little dots at the corners. Those are the vertex points. And I can click outside the shape, and then if I click inside the shape, I can select the different points. Now I find for almost all adjustments or almost all transformations done in edit mode, it's helpful to make the object transparent so I can see all the points and faces. And to do that, I want to enable X-ray mode, which I can either do by clicking on these two squares up here that say toggle X-ray view, or I can press Option Z on the keyboard to switch those views. Now, I'm going to press on the x-axis, so I'm looking at my image from the side, and it's shifted to an orthographic mode, as in non-perspectival. So everything is the size that it looks, or everything looks the size as it is. I don't know the answer to which one it is. It's a deep philosophical question. Up here, we have a number of different options, but I'm going to click on this magnet, which represents snap. And I'm going to make sure it's set to snap to increment. And I'm actually going to set it to absolute snap, so it's going to be an extra snappier snap. Um, I'm now going to press A. In other programs, you would press Command or Control A, but in Blender, Select All is just one click of the letter A. And I'm going to press G, which is grab. And now I can move the image around. Because I'm looking at the image along the Y axis, I'm only moving it side to side on the X axis and up and down on the Z axis. Now I just want to move this object up, so I'm going to press the letter Z. And now I'm only moving up and down, and I'm going to let the bottom edge snap with that red line, and then click outside the image or press Enter. And now I've set up the image. Whoa. Something went weird there. Oh, no, we're okay. It was just a weird perspective. So now I've set up the image so that it's essentially sitting on a plane. Sorry, set up the object so it's sitting on a plane. So in this mode, I can select vertexes, which are the little corners of my polygon. If I select um, number, if I if I press number two on the keyboard or change the select options here, I am now selecting edges. If I press number three on the keyboard, I can now select faces. In x-ray mode, the faces get these little dots in the middle so you can tell if you're clicking on a face in the foreground or the background. Now pressing two, so I'm selecting edges, I'll now press the Y axis again and I'm going to drag a selector box such that it goes right through the middle of the object but doesn't touch the top or bottom. And rotating the scene again, you can see what I've achieved by this is I've selected all the vertical edges but not the horizontal ones. Having done this, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose this option, Bevel Edges. And now I'm just going to move the mouse a little bit and we can see now that um, we've just added a little bit of material to the edges of this polygon here. We could add less, we could add more, it's kind of up to your taste. So we've done this for two reasons. One, in real life um, or in the real world, there's no really like true hard angles, especially between walls. So Having a little bit of a bevel on the edges of the walls will give the space a little bit more of a sense of realism. We won't have that perfect computer geometry. 
Another reason is I want these faces, these square faces around the sides, to be such that they don't um, share any sides with each other. So now that is, that is achieved. So having done that, I'm going to press three on the keyboard and one by one, holding down the shift key now, I'm gonna select the sides of the shape. So just the square faces. You can see the pentagon faces on the top and bottom are not selected. So now that I've selected all these faces, I'm going to press the letter I on the keyboard. And now as I move the mouse um, left to right or up and down, it seems like it's working better left and right in this case, um, you can see that I'm creating a new face inside these squares. And I'm gonna get this so that it's approximately the width of the image I'm going to place. I say approximately the width, we're eyeballing this to just see what looks good to us. Um, and when I say width, I mean width. I don't mean the long side or the short side. So if you're, it doesn't matter if your image is vertical or horizontal. So having set that, I will press enter. Now, if I were to select just this face alone, and if I were to resize it, you can see that the standard resize changes the size of the shape. And if I were to, for instance, press X, it gets wider and narrower. I'm gonna press escape to undo that. If I select this face, you can see that the global size works just fine. But if I press X, we get some really weird stuff going on. And that's because this side is not parallel, parallel with the X axis. So reselecting all these at the same time, We're now gonna see what happens if we resize them all together. And you can see that we get some pretty interesting but undesirable stuff going on. We're totally changing this shape. So I'll hit escape again. So the one dimension that all these shapes share is the Z axis. They all have the same, up and down is the same for all these shapes. So I will now hit S and I will hit Z and you can see that I can change the height of these images at the same time. So if these were horizontal images, I would have had a bigger box and I would be shrinking them into rectangles. And as vertical, I'll be enlarging them into rectangles. So my shape is four to three. So doing a little math, um, if the image is three wide and four tall, um, that would mean one, that could also mean one wide and 1.3 tall. That means that the height of the image is 1.3 times the width. So rather than eyeballing the size, I'm just gonna press on the keyboard 1.3 and then hit enter. And now my images are sized to the shape. Now we're almost done with this phase, but the last thing we're gonna do here is we are going to separate the floor and um, ceiling from this space. So I will select this face, still in face select mode. If you end up selecting a point or something, it means you're in a different mode. So I'm going to press three back into face mode, selecting the top and only the top. Now I'm going to press the letter P on the keyboard as in separate. I press P and I choose this first option selection. And now here in the layer section where it's calling it cylinder 001, I'm going to rename it top. I will now go ahead and select the, if I can find it, select the bottom face, press P again, selection, and rename this one to bottom. And while I'm renaming things, I will rename this cylinder to walls. I suppose I could call top and bottom floor and ceiling, but whatever, we get it. So now I will hit the tab key, which puts us back into object view. And if I turn off x-ray, which we don't need to do, but we're gonna do it for a demonstration, we can see that our object looks pretty much like it did before. So none of these settings have any transformational effect yet, except that we can hide the floor and ceiling and walls all separately. So I will hide the floor and ceiling, though keep in mind they will still render because the cameras are there. And that will conclude this section of the demo.